Hi everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here with the first episode of our newest Let's Play series. This time around we're going to be playing Battle Brothers. Now if you're not familiar with the game, this just released on Steam in Early Access today, today being April 27th, 2015. Um, you'll probably be seeing this video April 28th when I finally get a chance to edit and publish it. Um, but that said, the game just released in Early Access. It's made by a small three-man development team out of Germany. And from what I can tell, these guys are, um, you know, really nice guys. They've got their heads on their shoulders. I was able to have a very, very brief conversation with them on uh, another YouTube channel. And by very brief, I mean like one or two comments. But um, the game for being early access is very well polished. All the core features of the game are already in. And they will just be adding more depth to the game as they go along. You can purchase it on Steam right now for $20. Or if you feel like supporting them, there are more expensive packages. Um, the Digital Deluxe is $25, I believe. And the additional $5 will go directly toward a soundtrack for the game. So that all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to jump into a new campaign here. And I like that banner, so we'll stick with it. I'll go through all of them, though, just so you guys can see them. There's this one here with the castle tower. There's this horse like a heraldry lion, a fleur-de-lis, a sword, just this kind of bandit looking banner here, a crow or a raven, this eagle, um, swords crossed under some gold, a skull, another like stallion horse looking thing, a sword, a boar, just this blue and white banner here, a scythe, a very Warhammer 40k looking gauntlet and a fist, another cross sword thing, another skull, um, a wolf, a heraldry looking wolf, another sword, a moon, another lion, a griffin, a crown, um, black and white squares and back to where we were. I'm gonna stick with this one and since I've been playing a lot of Pillars of Eternity in my spare time I'm gonna call my company the Watchers which kind of goes along with the tower I guess. I'm gonna start in normal on the difficulty from what I've seen other youtubers um, playthroughs this game can really really kick your butt it's very easy to get a death spiral going but I'm gonna start on normal We'll see how it goes. If I get my butt kicked, we'll go down to easy just for the sake of continuity so that I can get a consistent playthrough going. But I did a little bit of the tutorial, and I'm confident that with some gameplay under my belt, I'll be able to handle normal. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay. I'm not going to read all this. There is quite a bit of text there. If you want to read through it, go ahead and pause here. This is your chance. Um, I'm going to jump into the game in 3, 2, 1, huzzah. Okay. So here's our troop here. Let's go ahead and take a look. Actually, I need to pause, don't I? Okay. So before the game clock starts running on me, let's pause. We start with three guys in our party. We have Torhelm. He is a hand-to-hand -hand specialist. His background is a miller, so that adds plus five to his fatigue from throwing around bags of flour. He is fearless, so that'll add 10 to his resolve. He is a founding member, so that gives him a small bonus to three of his major skills. And he is tiny. So that boosts his defense, but hurts his offense slightly. We also have Gizzler. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it. I'll probably change that to something I can say. Uh, he is, let's see, he's got Bash and he's got Knockout. I believe those come with his club. Yeah, so that that is going to be the skill that comes with the weapon they've got equipped. He is a Grave Digger, so that'll add a little bit to his resolve and his fatigue. He's club-footed, so he's going to 
take a slight penalty for movement. Looks like instead of every square or hex, I suppose, every hex you move will take two fatigue. In his case, he's going to take three for every movement. He's tough, so he'll get a little bit more health. Founding member, so again, he'll get a slight bonus. And he favors two-handed weapons. Let's take a look at Ulf next. He is also unarmed. He's an apprentice, so he will gain an experience a little bit faster. He's also gluttonous, so he's going to eat through our supplies a little bit quicker. And again, a founding member. Let's go ahead and unequip everything from these guys. Because we are going to hire on some more guys and then redistribute our items accordingly. So let's head to the city, if I can find out how. There we go. Now we've got a lot of contracts available here, but before we do any of that, let's look at who we can bring on. Now up here you'll see, and actually in the previous screen you'll see it as well, this is our crowns, so essentially our gold or our money. These are our provisions. Um, if you look in the tooltip, it'll say how many provisions you're consuming per day and how long those provisions will last you. Uh, tools and supplies are what's going to help you repair damaged equipment. This will kind of happen automatically, but only things equipped to characters will get repaired. So um, it's definitely worth, if you've got damaged equipment, to be sure that you have the right stuff equipped to the right guys, because these can get pretty pricey and you don't want to waste them on equipment that you're going to toss. Ammunition is your arrows, bolts, javelins, and uh, consumable weapons, essentially. So that'll show you what you've got there. And then medicinal supplies are going to allow you to heal your guys. And again, that'll happen automatically over time. I believe the more you have, the faster it goes. Um, so anywho, let's go ahead and take a look at who we've got to choose from here. Carl the Cruel sticks out because he's very, very cheap. From what I can gather looking at um, other playthroughs, the first one, the, the initial hiring fee, tends to reflect how well they're equipped, and the daily wage tends to reflect how skilled they are. So, for example, someone like Reiner or Eberhardt here, they're pretty well equipped, because they cost so much to hire initially, and that money's gonna go toward, you know, equipment that they've got on. But as you can see here, their daily wage isn't, you know, considerably high, especially compared to some of these other guys. And that's because their stats are gonna be fairly average. Where someone like this guy, you can see, it's tiny there, but he's got full chainmail. He's also got a crossbow and some bolts on his back. So his equipment's gonna cost quite a bit. But he's also going to be pretty skilled with those you know, weapons and armor because of his daily wage being so high. And so as you can see, we don't have a lot to start out with. We're probably going to take as many cheap guys as we can and hope we can level them up a bit. So, Carl the Cruel is a catcher of rats. That's the title Carl once preferred. He grew up in Marburg surviving in the alleys. His mother demanded the finest meats he could find and she didn't mean from the market. But Marburg wears on people and it wore on Carl like a giant nibbling creature. Sensing that there must be more to life than rats, Carl now seeks to put his shriveled nose, odd gnawing habits, <laughs> and quick but kind of gross hands to better use. Interesting. Well, we're not too picky this early. Let's go ahead and take him. And then we'll look at Cory the Mountain. When it comes to death, worms take the flesh and time the bones, but grave robbers get the jewels. Once a fine jeweler, dementia drove Cory into crafting a very different style of attire. A toothy necklace chatters as you he oh, what's going on here? A toothy necklace chatters at you as he explains himself. So he it sounds like he was making jewelry out of the the uh, people he was grave robbing. The man is quiet, but you can't shut him up around the graveyard. Alright, well, again, we can't be too picky here. Hack on the Apprentice. Hmm. Um, 
again, not going to be too picky here. I'll probably have to choose between one or both of these guys as well. Uh, butcher, Poacher. Unfortunately, you can't look at their stats until they're part of your party. So again, these two things here are really the only way you have to gauge how good they are. But let's go ahead and look at Hack-On. Mastery of an art is prestigious, but no one gets there in an instant. Not to be outdone by his overachieving brother, Hakon began looking for an apprenticeship. Learning all he could, Hakon built the greatest work of art possibly ever seen in a field of underwater basket weaving. <laughs> his master, though, was a jealous one. Not to be outdone by a pupil, he burned the project to ash and eye-watering fumes. It was clear to Hakon he could learn fast, but perhaps there were better masters to study beneath. It seems like the devs have a pretty good sense of humor. Um, let's go ahead and take this guy. And I'd like to hire at least one more. But honestly, both of these guys would be ideal because I don't know if six is going to be... Hmm. Let's... Let's take one more, see what kind of equipment we can get, and if we still have some decent money left, I may consider coming back. Uh, but for now, we're just going to take Reiner. Growing up poor, Reiner quickly learned to kill and strip animals, eventually founding a butcher shop. After a human finger was found in one of his deer wrappings, the man was driven from his business. Something about blood and guts sits just right with Reiner. In that case, welcome to the battlefield. Well, at least he's not squeamish. Okay, so we've got seven. And a thousand gold left. Now let's go ahead and look at the shop. And the first thing I want to do is grab as many shields as I can, I suppose. Shields are very, very nice to have. Um, as you'll see when we get into combat. They're, from what I've seen in this game, playing defensively is probably the best way to go. There are a lot of... Um, not, not I'm not going to say area denial, but there's a lot of there's a lot of bonuses to letting someone come to you rather than going out and attacking them and the shields will give you the most benefit of that the bucklers have a nice little defensive bonus but they don't have the same uses that a wooden shield has like uh, shield walls and knockback for example so let's go ahead and take some of these I there we go right click not double click so I will take all of these And I believe we're going to need some weapons, but we don't really have much. Let's leave very quickly. And oh, I didn't need to leave, actually. Again, let's unequip all these guys. Looks like everybody is wearing rags, and he's the only one with a melee weapon. Okay. So... Down here is where our offensive stats are going to be. So we should probably take a look at those when deciding who to give what. So he is pretty competent in both from what I've seen. 57 is good to start out. 46 isn't bad for an archer though either. He is pretty balanced as well. Slightly more health. Uh, again, pretty balanced. This guy's got slightly less health. A little bit worse in all respects. A um, little bit worse offensively. No defensive skill, but pretty good health. He is terrible at archery. Not too bad at melee. A lot of health. He is average in melee bad at archery and kind of low health. So it looks like this guy is our tankiest character. Although his defense skills, while better than everybody else's, aren't that great. He's actually the best defensive guy. But for now I'm going to give him the shield. And I suppose, well we'll give him a shield as well. Um, 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 
he's gonna have to carry a shield because he's just worthless with a bow. Same goes for him. And then, let's see, 45, 43. Huh. I think Cory's gonna be an archer because he has zero melee defense. And then, he will get a shield. And Carl is going to be like a backup archer, I suppose. Let's see what else we can afford. And then we'll come back and equip them with some weapons and armor. Oops, that is the wrong screen. Let's see. I think all we can afford for now is a short bow. And we're obviously going to need some arrows. Those are bolts. Those are javelins. Okay. I would like... Spears are very, very good in this game, as well as hatchets and axes. Unfortunately, I don't see too many... Excuse me. Too many spears. I guess we'll have to take this one. And... Huh. I don't know that I want to spend that much on one weapon. Bludgeons would be nice because these clubs aren't very good. We have daggers, we have knives. Whew. Um. Let's grab this gambeson and this Akaton cap. And I'd like to grab one more weapon, but... Okay, we'll take the hatchet, and I think that's all I'm going to be able to spend. I'd like to have a little bit of gold left. Because if we have any trouble starting out on our first quest, we're going to be in big, big trouble with such little gold left. So, he was going to be our tanky character, so let's give him this. And then I suppose I'll give him the spear. These guys will get the hatchets and um, let's see linen, linen and woven. Woven is slightly better than linen as you can see 30 versus 20. So I will give huh I'll give you the woven tunic. I'll give you the linen. And then you can have the hood just to balance it out. Let's see, which one looks better with the hood? Not that it matters. I'll give you this one. Now then, I really don't have enough to give to everybody. So I will give... No, you are pretty terrible, as I recall. You're slightly better. I'll give it to you. And then you can have the dagger as well. So the rest of these guys, he'll be the archer. And let's see, sackcloth, 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 tattered. Um, I guess we'll go there. You, let's see, who is the terrible one? You, huh? interesting he will level up the fastest though because he's an apprentice gluttonous irrational I'm not so confident that oh wow he's actually got really good defense though okay yeah I can work with that in that case we'll give him one of the better ones and a knife And then I suppose you're going to get a club and one of these. And hopefully you can at least cause a little bit of damage before you go out. I'm also going to give him a backup club just in case. And I think that's going to do it. We really don't have any more money to spend. So let's see about some of these jobs. 
Okay. Uh, again, there's a lot more text here that I'm going to read, so if you'd like to pause and read it, go ahead and do that now. I'm going to scroll down very slowly. Okay. And this is the... This is like the introductory quest. Basically, there's a bandit hideout that you have to go f attack, and they'll give you 300 crowns to do it. We'll go ahead and take this one. Since the bandit hideout should be... Well, you can kind of see it. It's right here. Um, so we can do it, come back, and hopefully the rest of these missions will be here. Or... I suppose not. Anyways, let's go check it out. Okay, so there's going to be some bandit thugs and then one bandit marksman. Let's go ahead and jump in and look at some combat. And I'm not really timing this. I wanted to cover a little bit of everything before I end the first episode. So um, I guess this episode will just run as long as it does. And I'll try to keep the rest of them to about 20, 25 minutes. You know, fairly standard episode. Wow, he is already, <laughs> already wavering. That's not good. The rest of these guys are steady. Um, hmm. Not a lot of terrain diversity here. The raised terrain gives you quite a significant advantage, and using the shield bash to kind of push around and gain the high ground is. A very very good strategy to take in this case I don't really have anything worth you know working towards so I'm probably just gonna stay on the defensive let's actually see so it looks like it may be worth moving up one for everybody as they would only be able to get to this row here And so I'd like to be able to attack in the next turn without moving. So I think I'm going to push everybody up one. Um, I would like him on the end, though, because he doesn't have a shield. So we will go here. And then we'll just end our turn. Oh, that's not a good start. I will move him down, and then we're going to go shield wall, and end our turn. Let's see, you're going to come up one, and use your shield wall. Okay. Now, there's two different attacks the archer can use. The first is a quick shot. It only costs four action points which is this yellow orange bar here or you can take an aim shot that takes eight so obviously the quick shot is a nice thing to have if you want to move a little bit and then fire but the aim shot is going to be much more accurate so let's take a look it looks like we're just out of range here I don't know how much I want to move up we can actually yeah let's move him to the end of the queue I'd like to let them kind of move around and then take a shot. So we'll move him up. 20 fatigue. I don't know if I should be shield walling this early. Um, it might have been a waste to shield wall him and him. Because I don't think they anybody's going to be able to attack me this turn. So I'm just actually going to wait. And hopefully putting those two in shield wall didn't give me too much fatigue that's you know going to cost me later okay so we'll move up and then I suppose we'll shield wall and then let's end our turn now he can finally attack and if you see when I highlight him a red shield appears on this guy that means there's a chance that we can hit him while firing at him. 
and let's see, 18% chance. I might be better off moving this guy out to the edge so I can fire around my troops rather than over them. So how far can we move here? It actually might be worth trying to get up onto this. So I can go to here. Let's try that. Now he's pretty beat up. I'm going to have him fall back, I think. Not that I really care. I mean, he's kind of... Well, he is very much disposable. Or, uh... Well, yeah. Basically disposable. Um... I'm actually going to wait. Let's throw him in the back. And see what happens. They're pretty content to just sit there. Okay. So now, we've got a couple choices. By the way, early on... Spears and axes are the way to go. Axes are great offensive weapons, and spears are great defensive weapons. Um, from what you can see here, the axe does a lot of damage to armored troops, which almost everyone's going to be. So you can see against a regular unarmored guy, he's going to do 21 to 38. Against someone who's armored, he'll do, or against their armor essentially, he'll do 25 to 45 damage. And so... This guy is pretty lightly armored. This guy is much heavier armored. Um, although he's not wearing any headgear. So I'm going to attack him, I think. Neither of them have shields, so we don't need to worry about that. And then I will shield wall. Now he's only got one guy he can attack. So I'm just going to go ahead. Well, I'll, I'll shield wall first and then attack him. And we hit him. So he's going to close in. I'd like to get you to here. And then we'll end your turn. And you can see putting him in shield wall gave him a pretty substantial defensive bonus. So we're going to do the same thing over here. We'll shield wall and then we will stab him. And we hit, but it only hit his armor. Now, what I would like to do is close around this guy. He's kind of a wild card still, though. But I think I'm going to risk it. I do have the archer set up for next turn. So if he tries to move, I should have a pretty good shot on him. And he's wearing absolutely no armor other than that, like, sackcloth. So he's going to be pretty squishy. So let's move here. And then we will... Huh. Do I want to play defensively or... Go for the kill? He's wounded, but he's not... Yeah, if he were closer to dying, I would go for it. But let's, let's play it safe. He missed. We're like right on the fringe of his range, so... We should be alright. I'm kind of tempted to step here, but I think I'll keep focusing on him. You can see here, um, this isn't available to me because he's already engaged. But at the beginning of the game, this is really, or at the beginning of the combat, this is a really nice skill to have. Anyone who moves into your area of uh, influence, which is essentially anything adjacent to him, will take damage, and you can actually knock them back. Um... Obviously, I can't use that right now, but we'll go ahead and shield wall up, and then take a stab at him. And we destroyed his armor, and wounded him pretty badly. Now, this guy... Huh, do I want to save him? Let's go ahead and have him fall back. Oh. There are, um... Attacks of opportunity in this game, as you just saw there. And it cost us. So now we're on the high ground. You can see our chance of hitting went up pretty good. So we're at 57 now. Let's take a shot at this guy. And we miss. Archers do do quite a bit of damage in this game. So while they are inaccurate, they definitely hit pretty hard when they, when they do hit their mark. Okay, here we go. Let's 
let's have him attack this guy. These two will focus on him. So we'll do shield wall again and take a stab. Two misses there. He is gonna keep attacking this guy. Ooh, a little bit of damage to both. Little shield wall here. And hmm, he's gravely wounded. Let's go for the kill here. Very nice. And now he's gonna shield wall and try to do some damage to this guy. Ooh, a miss. Now I've got two choices. I can either move up here and help out here, or I can move down and help out here. This looks to be going in our favor. So I'm gonna help out down, I think. I'm gonna move to here. Yeah, let's do that. And I will take my chances and go for a stab. And it looks like we destroyed his armor, but we didn't do very much damage to his health. Okay, that's a miss, and another miss. Uh, that was a slight hit to his armor, but no, no actual damage done. Let's take another aim shot. This time at... Well, we'll do the same guy, I guess. Ooh, we almost hit our own guy there. And he hit us in the armor, luckily. Let's get our shield up. Take a stab at him. We destroyed his armor, but no health damage. We'll do the same thing here. And we took a miss. Ooh, he got a counterattack there, but he missed. Let's put our shield up and stab him. Okay, so we got the kill. Let's move him up, and we'll finish him as well. Uh, that's about all you can do. Now I'll have you move to here, and let's put our shield up. He's going to flee. That does kind of help us. Now he's taking range penalties. Let's see. Oh, there we go. I was wondering. Some games, you know, it scrolls when you move to the edge. This one you actually have to click and drag. I think I will... How far can you move? I'm hesitant to go after this guy because he does have the high ground. If I rush him with someone so lightly armored, I may just be rushing this guy to his death. So let's actually wait till the end of the turn. And then we will send you up. And let's send you as well. How close can you get? It will keep you fairly spread out. Against archers, I, I don't know if you noticed, but the arrow does hit the square, or the, uh, the hex if you miss. So if I'm aiming at this guy, and the arrow lands here, if somebody's here, they'll still take damage from that arrow. So rushing in a big clump is a bad idea against an archer because, you know, he may be aiming at the center guy and miss, but if he misses and there's another guy standing right next to him, that guy's going to get hit. So, definitely spread out. Let's get the swing. We got a little bit of damage to his armor. And then we will do the same. And we got the kill there. This guy should break pretty soon. But uh, we're still going to have to go after him. Let's go here. And looks like we get another chance. I wonder if that, no, that's way too far. Let's see, if I move to there, I might get a shot. That's gonna give me five. And we missed. It looks like he's running for the edge of the map to retreat. We will keep pursuing, I guess. Okay, I don't think, oh, oh well, oh, yeah, I get one more move, there we go, 
I'm building up quite a bit of fatigue from doing this, but since he's the only one on the map, I really... Ooh, that was what I was afraid of. I really like to close to melee distance, because then he won't be able to use his bow. Until then, I'm kind of in trouble here. I think he's in the grass. Let's go for it. Yeah. So now he won't be able to use his bow, and we're free to move up. Keep moving. I do wish they would add something where if there's only one guy left, he would break a little bit easier. There is morale in this game, but um, as you can see, he's still steady even though we've killed all his friends. And it's going to be pretty difficult to get after him. How much will this cost me? I don't want to hit my teammate on accident. I still have a chance to hit him. Let's just move around to here, I guess. Now we'll have you bust out your shield. You can see he has switched to his axe. So now we've got to fight him close up, but he does have the high ground, so that might make this difficult. I'm going to move to here and let him fall in there. And let's play it safe. You know, we're almost... We've almost got the victory. Let's not get somebody killed by playing too aggressively. Hmm. I'm going to move to here. Next turn, I'll move up and either attack or defend, but I don't want to put him there with no defense. Oh, no. That's a shame. Let's get you... To there and on the next turn we should have a shot on him. And then we'll put his shield up and <coughs> chop. And it looks like we wiped out his chest armor. I'll move him up and get a shield. Same goes for him. And this guy as well. I'll keep him one out of range. Now let's take our shot. And we miss. Oh, ouch. Okay, we'll take a hack at him. And he missed. Shield up and stab him. That hit his head armor. That hit him in the torso and did a pretty significant amount of damage. Let's see if we can't get the kill here. Very nice. Okay. Um, once you finish, be very sure to check this. If you don't, you'll lose out on all this loot. So we'll grab all of it. And that is our first episode of Battle Brothers. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you back here for the next episode where we'll go through and look at the consequences of that battle as well as grab another mission but for now that's all we're going to do thank you guys for watching and i'll see you back here next time